Hi everyone, in this video, we're gonna go through the common linked list operation that is displaying a list. So we can insert and remove nodes in our list all day, but if we can't print out our list, it's gonna be hard for us to know what the state of our list is, which will also make it hard to know if our insertions and our remo removals are bug free. So let's draw some pictures first to see how this algorithm is gonna work, and then we'll code it up and we'll be able to print out our list because in the previous video, we coded up the insert at front common link list operation. So here's where we left off. We had a head pointer and it was pointing to the most recently inserted at front node in our list, which was three. Three's next pointer pointed to the second node we inserted in the front of the list, which was five. And five's next pointer pointed to the first node we inserted at the front of the list, which was 12, and 12's next pointer points to null because it's the last node in the list. So there isn't another node to point to. All right, so for the display list algorithm, here's what we're gonna do. We aren't going to advance head through this list because then we're gonna lose the memory addresses of our nodes, in particular, the first node, right? Once we say advance head to here, we would lose the memory address of the node storing three. So we definitely don't wanna do this. Instead, we're gonna introduce a loop control variable, very similar to what we do with say like int i or int j with our common, you know, for int i is assigned zero, i less than size, i plus plus kind of loops operating on arrays. Okay, so here we don't have indexes though we have pointers to nodes. So I'm gonna grab, let's do blue, and I'm going to declare another node pointer called cur node. And cur is short for current, okay? So this is gonna be a loop control variable that we're gonna use to advance to a current node in the list. And we will keep advancing cur node until we reach the end of the list, how do we know we we reach the end of the list? When cur node is null, as it is over here at the end of our list, we'll know that's our stopping condition, which is kind of like our i less than size. But remember, we don't have a size and we don't have indexes with linked lists. Instead, we have pointers. And with pointers come null, and null is going to be the stopping condition we are going to test for. All right, so here's how it's gonna work. Per node is initially going to be assigned head. So that means that cur node is going to point to the same node as head. We can safely advance cur node without touching head and we won't lose any of the addresses of our nodes in the list. All right, so cur node starts at the first element and as long as that first element is not null, remember the list could be empty, then we'll simply print out something like per node. Oops. Value. Just kind of slap a C out around that. And there, we can print out the first node in our list as long as there is a node. Okay, so these are kind of the building blocks of our display list. But the key is two things. One, We've got to check to make sure that cur node is not null. If cur node is null, then this right here is gonna crash our program. We also need to have progress towards our Boolean condition being false, right? We can't just always keep checking cur node not equal to null. We actually have to advance cur node through our list. So what I wanna do is now that we've seen a little bit of the building blocks, let's get rid of all of this and Let's type up a little bit of the scaffolding here. All right, so cur node is going to be assigned head. While cur node is not equal to null, here's our test right here to make sure that before we grab next from cur node, we know that cur node isn't null. And also, this is our stopping condition when we reach the end of our loop. Then we're gonna simply see out 
uh, kernode value and our progress towards our Boolean condition being false is going to be to advance kernode through the list. All right, so let's trace through this little algorithm that we just pulled together from our building blocks. So Kerr node is initially head. We already set that up in our diagram. Okay, we test Kerr node not equal to null. That's true, Kerr node is storing the memory address of this valid node in memory. So we're gonna print out Kerr node's value. So our output over here Say in bold black will be three. Okay, then we say cur node is assigned cur node next. So cur node next is the memory address of five. So that means that we're going to be advancing cur node to point two five. We test cur node not equal to null. That is correct. Cur node stores this valid address. Then we're going to print out cur node's value. Cur node's value is five, which means we're going to print out five below the three. Then we're going to advance cur node. Cur node is assigned cur node next. Well, cur node next is this guy right here. So we're going to advance cur node so that now it points at node with value 12. Okay, we test cur node not equal to null. That is true. Cur node stores the valid of this. Um, cur node stores the address of this valid node here. We're going to print out cur node's value, which is 12. So we'll print out 12 after the 5. Then we're going to advance cur node. So cur node is now cur node's next. Okay, so cur node's next is going to be this link right here which is null, which is okay. As long as we don't access anything using null, we should be good. So cur node has now been advanced to here. And our Boolean condition on our while loop is gonna protect us from accidentally using cur node in order to grab, say, a next member value because cur node is null. And that's what our Boolean condition tests for. While cur node not equal to null, Cur node is equal to null, so this is false. So we break out of the loop and we are done traversing our list. That's it. That's our display list. It's very much like our, you know, for i get zero, i less than size, i plus plus. The only difference here is we're not using indexes, we're using pointers, and we don't have a size, but we do have this special condition over here, which marks the end of our loop. End of our loop right here, signified by cur node equaling null. All right, let's code it up. So our goal is to be able to do something like list.displayList. And we will see the 3512 being printed out, because remember, Three is at the front, five is in the middle, 12 is at the end. No return value, no arguments. Pretty straightforward little function we're gonna write here. All right, so we're gonna need a node pointer for our cur node which is initially going to be head. Then we're gonna have our Boolean condition here making sure that cur node is not equal to null because we're going to be using cur node in the arrow operator in order to dereference and grab a member of the struct. So we wanna make sure it's not null. This is also our stopping condition because the end of the list is denoted by null. If this is the case, we're in the body of this loop, then it is safe in order to Dereference and access the value at per node. 
Then we need our progress towards our Boolean condition being false, which is going to be advancing Kerr node. Kerr node is assigned Kerr nodes next. Now, if we have an empty list, this just isn't going to print anything, which is fine. Let's print that. Let's print it out as is, and then I'll show you a cool little way to make it look more like a linked list so that it denotes more of an empty list better. All right, there is our 3512, just like we anticipated with our output over here. 3512. All right, so let's make a little adjustment here in order to make this look more like a linked list. So I'm actually going to print out little like pointers in between my nodes and then at the end of the list I'm going to print out null. Since I removed that endl this is going to end up all in the same line and it's going to look like our actual list does in memory which is awesome so cool. If I wanted to I could even print out a head beforehand and then it would look exactly like our diagram. Oops, we don't want that on the end there. And there it is. It looks just like our diagram. Head five, head three, five, twelve, null. Head three, five, twelve, null. Awesome. All right, so that's the end of our display list implementation and tracing with the drawings. So the next, the next function that we're going to implement is going to be append node which is going to be kind of a hybrid between our insert at front and our insert, or excuse me, our display list. Because an append node is going to walk through the entire list and insert at the end, insert at the end. So that's our next function. Stay tuned.